Okay, so I've uh, just completed the Mei Hong Song loop. Um, I would love to say that all is well. In fact, all was so well until the very end. Well, very near the end. Um, I had an accident. Yeah, I'm not proud of proud of it. Um, this is what happened. Uh, I, I, I decided I kept it to a few within a small company of people, friends. I didn't even tell my parents yet. <laughs> um, it was raining. I was driving from Pai to Chiang Mai, and there was this like very steep downslope. Uh, I was already engaged in gear two or even one. Remember it was raining and then I could literally see water flowing down the slope, you know. It's not like gushing like waterfall but there was water. I could see it from my driver's position. position. And I was singing Madonna's Like a Virgin in the car because there was a song playing. And yeah, I had the video recording of the few moments before the crash happened. Um, actually that's why I'm here. I didn't go to my original destination. So, um, I was going down the slope really slow and I, my car started sliding. And of course, I panicked. Um, and um, I tried to control the car, but I couldn't. So by the time it, it reached um, a steep slope angle, I was just sliding towards the side where the mountain region or where the vegetation is towards the left um, yeah and little did I know I think my car spun for about 90 120 degrees I can't remember which direction I was really like I really thought that that was the end <laughs> yeah um, <coughs> I mean what if a car had come from behind and just hit me what if a car had come in the opposite direction and hit me? You know, um, you, I mean, you watch this in a in a movie and everything. You didn't expect to experience this in a car in your car in a foreign country while driving down a slope, a treacherous slope. And <laughs> okay, just to use the stereotypical statement, you you feel like your life has just flashed you flashed past your very eyes and yeah I crashed into the into the side and I really hit the side of the mountain hard um, and of course my vehicle was at an angle it was there's a little ditch there I said oh shit man how am I gonna get myself out from here yeah so more later I'm, I've reached I'm right now in Chiang Mai I've decided to detour into Chiang Mai and instead of heading towards Nan later tips So I've, I've reached the um, Chiang Mai night market uh, food section so this is a 10 minutes walk or less from my from three residents where I put up uh, it cost me like uh, six Singapore dollars a night so back to the accident um, I uh, yeah so I I crashed into the side and in my mind I was like oh god how much will get out of it What's gonna happen for the rest of the trip? I'm gonna move around and um, you know, thousand and one questions racing through your mind when you are uh, sitting in a car still belted up at an inclined angle. Um, thank you. So I struggled to get out of my seat. Um, I could hear something like Spluttering, splatting, splattering in the engine area <coughs> And I'm not sure what was happening in my car I turned off the engine right away straight 
across and I looked around me, it was still drizzling. Uh, many vehicles stopped to help me. The first one being a young person, he came out, uh, he couldn't speak English. Of course, he gave me that uh, reassuring smile. He made some phone calls. I, I don't know what he did, but I, I guess he was calling some mechanic or calling for help. Um, and um, yeah, and then another young person also stopped. Um, but what turned the tide was this family. I'm going to show you a picture in a while. family uh, of um, an elderly couple. It was raining and uh, this woman immediately she stepped out the rain. Um, I got back to the car and got myself my rain jacket and I felt bad for her because she was just walking towards me asking if I'm okay in Thai. Um, and I, I got a, an umbrella, a gorgeous umbrella that I got the long road for small umbrella for her and she was I mean, she was really glad was happy with my gesture so I think she was just asking me if I'm okay and I was trying to explain to her what happened and how, how stupid I felt how stupid I felt um, then then her husband immediately took control of the situation he, he and, and the wife as well yeah um, they he gave instruction to the two young persons to um, to situate themselves at the top, one of them at the top of the van, and the other person at the opposite direction to stop the traffic or rather to control the traffic, uh, because yeah, my car was in a precarious position and and of course this truck was stopped like uh, 200 meters in front. Um, so I I must have been in a state of shock because uh, I looked at my car, I looked at what they were doing. Well, the young person broke off some branches and put it at uh, the section he was uh, manning at the, you know, at the top of the slope. The band, oh yeah, had a band, the slope. Um, um, and um, yeah, I was also trying to help by direct traffic. But it was very tricky because it is a band, there's a slope, and uh, many vehicles, they actually stopped to look. Um, and but they didn't stop the look like, like you know Singaporean accidents they slowed down the traffic there wasn't a traffic jam but they stopped and they actually got out to us if they could help and I don't understand them because they were speaking Thai um, I mean I mean you can imagine how overwhelming it was then the rain and the number of people who stepped up to help um, yeah I was so let me just stop this for a while. So this this oil tanker came by. The, the elderly person, he's not elderly, he's like middle-aged man, older than me. Um, he stopped the oil tanker and asked me if it's okay that if he used the oil tanker to drag my vehicle from the from the boot area, right? Out of the ditch. And I say, Oh sure, if you can do that and <laughs> And uh, if I can like save the t save some time, uh, if, if a miracle happens, why not? You know, and and yeah, that's what he did. He took out some ropes from his uh, truck. Um, uh, it's a huge uh, uh, Isuzu truck, which is very common among Thais. Um, he he tied it to some ring I never knew existed at the bottom of my car, car below the boot, and he began. He instructed me to go back in the car, um, release the brake, um, set the gear to neutral. Ah, that's very important. He says, no, 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 neutral, neutral. Um, and uh, and then I was set, I was seated. I belted myself, and I felt the car being dragged out of the ditch. And 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 lifted. After a sh like a short moment, I was I was facing the traffic. My car was facing the traffic. Um, and so he said, start the vehicle. The same man. Um, and I started the vehicle, there was this spluttering noise again. Um, okay, let me show you the stall I'm ordering from. There was spluttering noise and um, he told me to turn off the aircon. Like, this guy is amazing, he knew immediately what was wrong. Of course, we popped the bonnet and, um, 
and he was just looking at the engine, he says engine is good uh, and the only problem was the fan that's spinning in front of the bonnet and that is connected to the aircon. So after stopping the aircon, the spluttering stopped. You know, that, that, that spluttering metal against metal noise that you hear stopped. So um, yeah. So the engine worked. The front of the car wasn't smashed to my surprise. Of course the sides of the um, um, fender popped out and I and I hit it back in and wow it it, it, it went back in. Um, the lights one on one side of the headlights it has you know it, it, it has jutted out. The boot the bonnet is also a little slightly out of alignment uh, but everything looks pretty good. Um, what happened next was that the, the man he got into a car and he he instructed the rest of the guys to stop the vehicles coming from both ends. He he turned the vehicle around to face the right direction towards Chiang Mai. Um, it doesn't stop there, okay? And he told me, okay, your car is working. You wanna are you driving to Chiang Mai? Do you have a place to stay? Um, I said that I'm going to Nan. Um, there was a change in schedule, and, and right now I can't go anymore because Nan is also very mountainous, and I don't know how long this vehicle will hold. I said I'll stop by Chiang Mai, look for accommodation and sleep for the night and then decide if the vehicle brings me that far, what to do next. So, they told me, in, they spoke to me in Thai and mentioned that they will follow me all the way to Chiang Mai. Can you imagine, by now I'm so nervous, I was driving at like snail speed, fearful of every, every bend, every like down slope because it was too drizzling and even when the rain stopped I was so apprehensive making each turn uh, navigating each bend uh, like switching to gear one when I had to negotiate a down slope and mind you these down slopes are super steep um, yeah they literally followed, followed me to a, a petrol kiosk where I had to take a piss and from there and then they asked again, do you have accommodation? I said, I really have to go to the toilet, uh, but I'll find accommodation. I'm, I'm sure they understood me because the son, um, he wasn't in the picture, he didn't want to be, have his picture taken. So he, he, when I came out of the toilet, they weren't around. I wasn't angry, but I was just very thankful that for what they have done, I took a picture with them at the accident site. I'm just very grateful for what they have done. The mother, the father, they were like, you know, they, they treated me like I was family and a member in, in, a, in the predicament and they stepped forward in the rain, the lady was walking in the rain, being drenched and I'm just so moved. You know, I've already shared on my social media about how kind these ties are, extending invites to dine with them. Um, yeah. So my car has brought me all the way to three residences. Um, they, uh, as I was nearing the Chiang Mai city, right, I realized that I don't have the car number plate. Um, and the car number plate actually was was picked up by the mum, and she placed it in the back of the car together with the number plate holder and part of the fender. Uh, so I washed it, rinsed it away from. Leaves the mud away, the vegetation away. Um, let's hope the car is still in a good condition tomorrow. And I thank some of you out there who read my Facebook post about me wanting to drive seven hours to Nan. Thank you for praying. This is a a wake up call, okay? Whatever, but it is a wake up call. And. Um, my plans have changed. Um, I still want to visit Nan. I want to look at how Jesse's, what he's doing in the school. Jesse, hi. Also want to visit this uh, cup surfing host, uh, Jacob. I'm so sorry. I've changed the plans. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but now with the condition of the car, I don't know where, how far it'll take me. Whether I should avoid the mountainous region altogether or and just stick to. Um, no, no, right.
rising roads, roads that don't go up and down, undulating roads. Um, yeah. More later, my food is here. <coughs> yes. So this, while I film the my mango sticky rice being prepared in the background, I, I think it's probably too bright. So is there a lesson in to learn all of this? Definitely. Um, was I complacent when I drove? Um, the Mei Hong Song loop is very treacherous, tricky loop. <coughs> Real while I was at my the reception of my uh, the, the place where I'm staying tonight. Um, she, I met this biker girl, you know, very tough Thai lady. <coughs> she mentioned that she actually fell when negotiating a Mayon Song Look. She scraped her entire like left arm, back, and she has also seen a couple of accidents every time she does the look, you know. So I might have a newbie uh, <coughs> freak accident. <coughs> I don't know, this shit happens. You know, and I've, I've tried my best to slow down. Okay, I've had a couple of misses when I when I couldn't slow down in time. I wasn't like flying through the the, the bands or anything, but I was like, whoa, <coughs> you know, negotiating the bands, and I, I wish I'd really slowed down until it's like snail pace. And this time around, I slowed down a lot because it was raining, and it's uh. Um... Thank you. Let's see. This is my mango. I slowed down a lot. And, um, and still, the vehicle started sliding the moment I went down slope. And that was scary. <coughs> so, lesson learned is be prepared for shit to happen. And um, I was. Was I prepared? I wasn't. Because I was in a state of shock. Um, when. When, I, my, when my vehicle hit the wall and as I was crawling out, you know, I was like looking for help. I said, oh God, please send some help <coughs> as soon as possible. Um, and help came in almost immediately. Actually, immediately with, with uh, the numerous people who came by. You know, help came. So, I'm just like, um, be careful when you when you drive or even when you bike. Uh, you know, look, it's it's really dangerous, but doesn't mean that you don't do it. You know, just by all means do it, and um, because it's really very enriching, very fun. Um, you get to you get to meet so many interesting people around the world. You get to see waterfalls and everything, you know, many, many interesting tourist spots. But for me, it was meeting people, meeting the locals, and meeting such interesting travelers, provided you're willing to interact with them. Um, yeah, be really careful, especially on that rainy day. The road conditions are really, really slippery. And today, I, I think God had a hand in this. <coughs> I could have easily spun out of control easily because I was in the car and I, and I felt like this is the end but it was not I came out without a scratch my car um, the front part wasn't sunk in except the aircon was busted which means from now onwards when I drive I cannot turn on the aircon except wind down the windows so that's, that's the outcome. And of course the bonnet is a little misaligned. But that's okay with me because when I took on this trip, I already told myself, um, this is like my last few months with the car COE. And uh, I will try to be very careful. If shit happens, I'm prepared to like um, lose the car and fly back. But I, I wasn't prepared actually. I'm not prepared to bust around or, you know, lug all my things. I brought too much things. So, thank God I survived that crash. 
my plans may be changed as a result but I'm still keen to drive up to Nan, to Loe, those mountainous regions. I at least have to cross mountains, mountainous roads, proper roads, but it's just that you have undulating slopes. Let's see where it goes tonight after sleeping and uh, we'll see how I feel in the morning. Thanks for listening. So be careful when you drive on rainy days, slopes like Hong Song. <coughs> pay, pay attention to the roads. Yeah, but even if you have been super careful, shit will still happen. And that's okay. Um, I'm still getting over the shock actually. It's, it'll take a time. Right, good night. This. You can see the number plate has fallen off, even the... Just see the alignment is totally off. Yeah, that's how deep I went into Thank you Black Beauty for surviving this. Make it to Nan, at least for now. Hey, just wanted to add a postscript to this video. Um, I literally fell asleep and it's like 1 a.m. right now. I just want to um, thank the following people for for granting me some support earlier during the day after the accident. Um, I mean, literally the the couple who came to my aid uh, from me, Hong Song, and their son, the man who has stopped to help direct the traffic. Um, thank you so much for responding with such practical help. And this is these are the the, the, the amazing ties that I have I've encountered so far on my journey, and I'm only halfway there. Well, literally, I have twelve more days on this trip before my visa ends. This is the 14th if I'm not wrong. Oh by the way, this is the hostel room, called three residences. Amazing right the room. This is a male dorm. And I'm the only person here. I have the whole room to myself, it's air conditioned, it's only six bucks. Um Yeah. Then when I arrived, um one of the supervisors, the female supervisor of this three residence. She she listened while I shared with her what happened uh, because I met her previously and then I went to the garden to sit down um, just to look through the photos um, and she literally just sat down beside me and I know she wanted to she wanted to avail herself to me in case uh, I'm still like uh, in a state of uh, shock which I was then um, then there were a couple of aunties who were at the reception. Um, the first thing I walked in, they saw the cut on my legs, on my, on my right leg, um, and they started like, oh, frowning over, swooning over, oh, that's the wrong word, uh, remember, auntie killer. Oh, they started asking what's wrong. I said, no, it's not from the accident, it's from a, a, a freak fall. Um, and one of them even like told me, hey, come, come, um, go and let me clean the wound for you again. Uh, I, to I, 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 I told her I would shower first, which I didn't for a long time. Uh, like probably at two hours later, I was back at the reception. The crew aunties were having dinner and, and one of them still came to me with uh, the first aid kit. Uh, cleaned my wound with disinfectant, applied iodine. Was totally totally just so yeah motherly about it all thank you so much um, the, two of, the two of you online Xinyu and Danny thanks for responding oh yeah Jesse sorry I <laughs> sorry for being so thanks for being so positive about it nah, and I'm sorry I, I can't make it there I couldn't make it there tonight uh, yeah thank you so much from the bottom of my heart um, this accident has taught me really not to take the force of nature for granted when it comes to driving on mountains when it's raining. Yeah, just to accept that shit do happen. And now I'm going to be driving with no aircon. 
And it's a rainy season, which is a good thing and a bad thing. The, it won't be so hot at times, but um, it means I uh, have to find creative ways to keep the rain out, keep the heat out, and all. Okay, might need to go back to sleep soon. Charles.